Hi there and welcome to today's Quentin Carpenter Nature of Flowers Photoshop tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to do a piece of work inspired by Reynold Drunhill. In. And to do this we're going to be doing a geometric shape on top of a landscape and we'll be using the layer mask to create a filtered effect so you can see the shape that has been reflected and turned around. Um, it's an interesting shape to make. So first of all, I'll show you how to make the shape and then I'll show you how to add the layer mask. And it's all very straightforward. I made a photo P tutorial about this a little while ago, which you may have watched. And if not, there'll be a link in the description below. Okay, so to show you how to do this, you need a landscape. This is a picture of Hastings Pier in the morning. You will then need to create a shape. The shape I'm going to use is in the shape tool, the rectangular tool. I am going to draw the shape of a square and I'm going to make sure that both the numbers are the same so that it is actually a square that I'm drawing and there you go there's my shape now once I've got my shape I'm going to need to rotate it so I'm going to move the mouse and turn the shape by 45 degrees and I've got a square shape now you'll notice on the finished one that this part of the square and this part of the square don't line up. So to make the shape the most effective way I can see how, we are going to cut two bits of the square off and we're going to turn it around and put it back together again. So we're going to use the rectangular marquee tool. We are going to draw a box over some of the square, leaving some of the slope. Once we've drawn the box, we're going to go edit and we're going to go backspace on the keyboard. It's going to not let us because we haven't rasterized our layer. I'll probably tell you about this many times. We've rasterized the layer and we're going to go edit and cut. Now we're going to go onto the other side and draw another square over part of the image like so, leaving a smaller bit of triangle and we're going to cut that out as well. Then we are going to take half the image like so and we're going to copy and paste we're going to cut and then we're going to paste it so edit cut edit paste and you can see we've got the shape cut now we're going to flip it so edit <coughs> transform flip horizontal and you can see now when we put it back together again we've got that distinctive shape that he uses in his work We'll check that it's lined up. Once we've done that, we will stick them back together again by pressing on the top layer and clicking Shift, clicking on the bottom layer and clicking Merge Layers. You now see we've got one layer with the shape on it, which we can then move around the image. Now, to make the effect that we need with the rotated landscape, first thing we need to do is duplicate the background layer. So we're going to go to the background layer here, right click, duplicate layer, click OK. We're going to turn this layer upside down. So we're going to go edit, transform, flip vertical. And you can see that that layer is now upside down. We're going to click on our shape. We are going to use the magic wand tool and select the area of the shape. So you've got this flashing line around it. And then we are going to add a layer mask. Not on that layer though, so I beg your pardon, we're going to this layer, we're going to, and we're going to add the layer mask. And you can see that we've now got the right way around and this black shape here. One last thing we do is hide the layer with the shape on it. And you can now see we have got the shape over the pier. Now the really good reason for using the layer mask, if we get rid of the locking mechanism between the mask and the layer and I click on the layer mask itself I can then move the layer mask around and find the exact place I wish to put my rotated shape. It's a really good technique to use using layer masks so that you can have complete control over exactly where your image goes and what's so lovely about this photograph here is the way that the clouds are mirrored against the pier and against the sky and it's all equally 
shaped. We can even make it slightly smaller if necessary so that it really does work in the style of the artist. So there you go. Have fun making your own rotated landscape reflections. Um, you can cut out different shapes and create all sorts of things. Another artist, Victoria Seema, does something very similar. And um, I'd like to see your own versions of this. Um, if you do a really good one and you want to share it with me, post it in the comments below so we can see it. And obviously don't forget to go over to hit that subscribe button and tick the notification bell. And have fun making your own rotated landscapes. Okay, and goodbye.